Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about human rights and government policy. Welcome back to Policy and Rights here on Depictions Media Radio. I am your host, Michael Coggs. And what we're about to hear is two different sides of of an argument um, of course we know that the uh, minority government that was elected he, um, in Canada was won by the liberals um, which means that, that they need help from uh, other parties in order to ensure that things will pass smoothly and basically to get their way so with that being said, um, Aaron O'Toole has made an announcement that there was about to be signed on the books a coalition between the NDP and the Liberal government. In which case he said that it's going to be a detriment to Canada, that it's going to cost jobs, it's going to hurt people in the long run, and that it should not be allowed. That there are too many things that the NDP and with the liberal spending that it would take Canada down the wrong path. So... The flip side to this, Jagmeet Singh is saying that there are no such agreements and that they will support the Liberal government if they're willing to help workers, they're willing to make sure that people have support in order to afford a home, live, live the Canadian life that they want to live. If they want to continue with um, su- supporting the extreme wealthy and um, <clears throat> take supports away from the, the the average person, that they need to look elsewhere. That they should not be looking for the NDP to support such things. And he brought specific examples about paid sick leave that. If something was to come up that would the liberals were to put forth something that reasonable that would give people paid sick time so they didn't have to go to work sick and it would help reduce the spread of infectious diseases because somebody's not showing up to work with even as much as a cold, then they would be willing to sign and support that. And he also said if they're looking to uh, give a tax break towards the ultra-wealthy or um, something that will put money back into the wealthy corporation po- um, pockets, that he would not support that and they would have to look elsewhere for such support. He also said that the, that the Liberal government on such things are not without options. He said, of course, there's a Conservative government, and there's also the Quebec Bloc Party that, that could actually support that. So, let's listen to both sides of the argument. Uh, with Aaron O'Toole uh, addressing the press in one conversation, and Jagmeet Singh addressing the press in a totally other site and conversation.
Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Good morning. It's been almost two months since the election. Justin Trudeau called the election because of the urgency of the times, he said. He said it was a pivotal moment in Canada's history. So pivotal that he hasn't even met with his own MPs who were elected for almost two months, and he's delaying a return of the House of Commons. His first order of business is to let his new Liberal members of Parliament know that they will have to accept a radical Liberal NDP coalition agreement. This coalition will mean billions of dollars of new spending to buy just Jagmeet Singh's silence. Les élections ont eu lieu il y a presque deux mois. Après presque deux mois, Justin Trudeau va finalement avoir une réunion avec ses propres députés. Son premier ordre de jour va être de dire à ses députés libéraux qu'ils vont devoir accepter un accord pour créer une coalition libérale néo-démocrate radicale. Cette coalition va provoquer des milliards de dollars en nouvelles dépenses, spécialement pour acheter le silence de Jagmeet Singh. Canadians can't afford this coalition. The Liberal NDP coalition would be a disaster for the Canadian economy and cause devastating financial impacts for workers and communities from coast to coast to coast. Canadians are already struggling with rising prices rising cost of living in Justin Trudeau's economy. Inflation is running at its highest point in 18 years. Paychecks have barely moved, and the economy is just limping along. The cost of everyday essentials, from gas to groceries to housing, are all going up. Household budgets are stretched thin, especially for seniors living on fixed income and families raising young children. This coalition will create billions in new spending that will further drive up inflation even more. And this coalition will mean that Jagmeet Singh will be able to push an even more radical agenda that will threaten the livelihoods of millions of Canadians. Les coûts de produits comme l'essence, l'épicerie et les logements augmentent de jour en jour. Tous les jours, les budgets des familles en resserrent un peu plus, surtout pour les personnes âgées qui vivent d'une revenu fixe et les familles avec des petits-enfants. Cette coalition va entraîner des milliards de dollars en nouvelles dépenses. Et ces dépenses vont faire grimper le taux d'inflation encore et encore. Cette coalition va permettre à Jagmeet Singh de réaliser des politiques radicales. Ces politiques vont menacer les moyens de subsistance des millions des Canadiens. A Liberal NDP coalition would shut down Canadian energy and resource sectors, eliminating thousands of jobs, dividing the country, and making Canada a poorer and less relevant nation. Canada's energy sector is the cleanest, most ethical, and most environmentally conscious in the world. When Canadian oil and gas producers commit to reduce emissions or to partner with Indigenous communities or enterprises, they will deliver on those commitments. That is not the case anywhere else in the world. By turning its back on hard-working Canadians, the Liberal NDP coalition will increase Canada's reliance on countries with horrific human rights records and records that are poor on the environment and other important issues. The NDP will also help cover up Mr. Trudeau's corruption and ensure that we can continue, he will continue to freely break or ignore laws without consequence. They've already done this several times over the last six years. Conservatives from across Canada will not stand by while the Liberal NDP coalition threatens our prosperity and unity as a country. We are the only voice that will fight tirelessly for Canadians. We are the only voice that will work to rebuild our economy and fight inflation. And we are the only party that will seek to unite Canadians rather than continue the politics of division. L'NPD va également aider Justin Trudeau à camoufler sa corruption en plus de l'aider à violer les lois fédérales comme ils le font depuis six ans maintenant. 
Les conservateurs ne vont pas démarrer le bras croisé pendant que la coalition libérale NPD menace la prospérité des travailleurs et des familles. Nous allons tout faire pour défendre les Canadiens. In the months leading up to the campaign, I repeatedly warned that Justin Trudeau and the NDP have the same high tax, high spending agenda. Last June, I said we were at a crossroads, and despite having four parties, Canadians only had two choices, the Liberal NDP bloc coalition or the Conservatives. Justin Trudeau has demonstrated time after time that he will do anything to hold on to power. He shut down Parliament, stifled dissent and accountability. He held an election in the middle of a pandemic. And now he's pledging a coalition to hide from Canadians. He's putting his clinging to power before the econo economic well-being of families. The election was a crossroads, and Justin Trudeau took a radical left turn. Canadians deserve better. In fact, Jagmeet Singh should tell the truth to Canadians. He did not run in that election on forming a coalition. So what is he being promised for him to break with his pledge during the election? Canadians deserve to be told the truth, and they deserve a parliament that will tackle the severe economic challenges facing Canadians across the country. There's only one party fighting to make life more affordable for Canadian families. If you care about securing your economic future, and the economic future of your children and grandchildren, there remains only one choice. Canada's Conservatives. Un seul parti se bat pour rendre la vie plus abordable. Si vous voulez protéger votre avenir économique, celui de vos, vos enfants et celui de vos petits-enfants, vous n'avez qu'un seul choix, le Parti conservateur du Canada. Thank you very much, and I'd be happy to answer your question. We'll take question until there will be six questions with follow-up in total. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions. On m'indique qu'on a le temps pour six questions avec suivi. Première question, microphone. Mm -hmm. Adam Mr. O'Toole, Travis Danraj, CBC National News. Uh, we reached out to your caucus to ask about vaccination status because we, uh, you know, reached out to the leader's office and we didn't get much information. 81 of your MPs said that they're vaccinated. 38 did uh, not respond or did not disclose. Do you or does anybody in the leadership of the party know the actual number of conservative MPs that remain unvaccinated ahead of Parliament? Well, thanks for the question, Travis. As you know, my office has said something very clearly, that all the MPs returning to Parliament on November 22nd and all senators participating as well will be vaccinated. Uh, that's important, and Conservatives will continue to follow all rules re with respect to health guidance, including the vaccination uh, of members of Parliament and senators for participation in the debates in Parliament. Vaccines are critical, and it's critical for us to show that leadership. Okay, so I'm, I take away from that that you don't know the actual number of your MPs because you know, you know, there have been estimates of 12, a handful, five, six. Do you actually know how many of your members remain unvaccinated at this moment? All of our MPs that participate in the House will be vaccinated. I, I don't get into talking about the personal health situation of any member of Parliament, Senator, or any Canadian. What I've tried to do since the earliest days of this pandemic, is to promote vaccines, to make sure we answer any questions that people have about them, and not politicize the taking or having questions answered about vaccines. I will continue to take that same approach. Bonjour, Monsieur O'Toole. Uh, I'd strongly encourage you to stay longer because we have a long line of questions here. Mais alors pour mes questions en français, je voulais savoir uh, le 22 novembre. Donc si un député conservateur non vacciné se présente quand même à la porte et brise les règles, est-ce qu'il pourra quand même rester dans votre caucus? Comme j'ai dit, tous nos députés, tous nos sénateurs vont être vaccinés. Point final. Et s'ils brisent les règles, qu'est-ce qui va se passer à ce moment-là? Comme j'ai dit, comme d'habitude, on va respecter toutes les mesures sanitaires. On a fait ça pendant la pandémie. On a fait ça pendant l'élection en pleine pandémie. Ce n'est pas le cas avec M. Trudeau. Et c'est très important pour nos députés et nos sénateurs de respecter les règles ici sur la colline. Et on va faire ça. Nicolas? 
Oui, bonjour, euh, Laurence Martin de Radio-Canada. Est-ce que vous pensez, M. O'Toole, que le PDG d'Air Canada doit démissionner parce qu'il ne parle pas français? Je suis déçu par le discours de M. Rousseau. C'est très important de respecter nos deux langues nationales et j'espère qu'il va avoir un à approche, un engagement fort sur le français, parce que c'est très important de respecter nos deux langues nationales, incluant avec une entreprise très importante comme Air Canada. Je comprends que vous ne pensez pas qu'il doit quitter, en fait, qu'il doit seulement améliorer son français. Euh, ma deuxième question est sur euh, le mini-caucus des députés qui va avoir lieu ce soir sur la question de la vaccination. Est-ce que vous pensez que c'est une bonne idée que plusieurs de vos députés se regroupent ce soir pour parler de vaccination? Il y a une grande différence entre le travail pour les députés, pour leurs concitoyens, et de créer la confusion sur euh, l'efficacité des vaccins. Et il y a une différence. À, à, et j'ai beaucoup de respect pour notre équipe et, et on doit travailler ensemble pour le bien-être des Canadiens. Les vaccins sont importants et c'est possible d'avoir un engagement pour vos citoyens. Et on doit laisser les, les commentaires sur les vaccins pour nos médecins. C'est très important de, de respecter les règles sanitaires et d'avoir une approche de leadership sur la santé des Canadiens. It's important to show Uh, leadership and respect for the health and well-being of Canadians. And there's a big difference between advocating for your constituents that may need accommodation in their workforce or are worried about losing their jobs and confusing people with respect to public discussion about, about vaccines. And what I've said repeatedly for many, many months, we should be answering questions about people that have some degree of vaccine hesitancy. We should not be creating new questions. Hi, Mr. O'Toole, Stephanie Taylor with the Canadian Press. I want to echo my colleague's earlier statement. It would be great if you could stay longer than the planned uh, amount that you're going to stay for to take questions. But in is talking that your first question? It, no, it's not. <laughs> um, in talking about the... Con it, is there not a risk, though, if you have a mini-caucus that is going to be advocating against vaccine mandates, that there will be discussion in that group where there could be anti-science sentiments, there could be messages that run contrary to public health messaging. Just yesterday, it seems that Ms. Gladue was calling into question the severity of COVID-19 versus polio. So why are you allowing your MPs to form this caucus when there seems to be a risk it, it could create added confusion to your message of go get vaccinated? Well, as I just said, it's important for members of parliament to advocate for their, uh, their constituents who may be losing a job or may need reasonable accommodation. We do that all the time on a range of issues. But it's very different to cause confusion with respect to the health and well-being of Canadians. Ms. Gladue's interview did that yesterday, and it's not appropriate at a time we should be answering questions about vaccine hesitancy, not creating new questions. So our team will will deal with this as a team because we uh, we respect one another and we have these discussions in caucus. But let me be crystal clear: the Conservative Party encourages people to get vaccinated, and all of our MPs, when we return to Parliament, will be respecting the rules here on the Hill. On doit avoir une approche plus professionnelle sur les conversations sur l'efficacité et la sécurité des vaccins. Ce n'était pas le cas hier avec Mme Gladue. Et on va parler comme une équipe sur ça. Parce que, comme j'ai dit, Laurence, il y a une grande différence entre votre travail comme une députée pour vos concitoyens et les questions sur les accommodations raisonnables et des questions sur l'efficacité des vaccins. Les vaccins sont sécuritaires et efficaces et j'encourage tous les Canadiens à se faire vacciner. J'ai dit ça... <rire> plusieurs de fois, uh, parce que c'est une question importante en pleine pandémie. What do you also then make of comments made by Leslie Lewis, who has also called into question the efficacy of vaccinating young children? Uh, Dean Allison, as well, has hosted broadcasts featuring scientists that kind of compare what's better, natural immunity to vaccinations. Are you going to be speaking to these MPs as well? What do you make of the messages they also are sending? As I've said, There's a big difference between advocating for your constituents 
who may need reasonable accommodation and creating confusion about public health measures. It's a great example of why members of Parliament of all stripes should let the professionals, let the public health officials, let the physicians answer questions about efficacy of vaccines or provincial programs on vaccination. Um, one thing we've seen in the pandemic from public officials, from people across the country, is social media is becoming uh, uh, the creation of instant experts across the country. I don't think that helps in our public discourse. I've tried consistently for a year not to politicize questions about vaccines, um, to try and find ways to, to answer questions and reduce hesitancy. We will continue to do that. And some of the instances, like Ms. Gladue's interview yesterday, add to more questions, and I don't think it's helpful. Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, you just said that comments by Ms. Gladue and Ms. Lewis create confusion and so hesitancy. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to take any action against them? Are they still welcome to stay in your caucus? Are you going to talk to them? Or are you going to kick them out? Well, as you know, Glenn, we have uh, conversations as a caucus, as we had before the return of Parliament, to, to confirm that all of our MPs and Senators that participate on the 22nd and come here to do their job on behalf of Canadians will be vaccinated. We will continue, as we have, to support all public health measures and to encourage Canadians to, to learn more if they have any hesitation. Our team will address instances where people are causing more questions and, and perhaps adding to hesitancy um, as opposed to advocating for their constituents and, and concerns about the border and other things. That's what we have to focus on as a team and our team will will address that as we do in accordance with the Reform Act. Question about the border. Um, the PCR test requirement for Canadians returning home remains in place. It's an impediment for, especially for families uh, who are traveling to the United States coming back. Do, would you support um, rescinding that requirement, and would you want it scrapped completely, or replaced with a PCR or with a uh, antigen test? What, what would you do? That's a great question, Glenn. Because you know we're talking about the importance of vaccines. We're talking about the importance to get double vaccinated. Once people are double vaccinated, and we can eliminate threats with respect to the spread of a fourth wave or, or variants, uh, we should make border moves easier. We should recognize how border communities. Are, are seeing their economies fall apart. And I do think our MPs and our caucus are engaged with some border ma mayors on both sides to see if we can eliminate some of these additional measures that are, are leading to, to, uh, to delays and less travel, less tourism at a time our economy needs it. But that can be done once people are double vaccinated and, and risk can be mitigated. So it's an important question that our party has been pushing for a few weeks. C'est une question importante parce que avec les vaccinations des Canadiens, des Américains, c'est possible de d'avoir une approche plus fluide à, à la frontière, particulièrement pour nos économies et le secteur touristique. Et on va continuer de, de, de poser des questions sur ça parce que avec les, les vaccinations et le niveau de vaccination, c'est possible d'utiliser les, les autres mesures et pas le, le test PCA tout le temps à la frontière. Is it question? Stephanie? Stephanie Levitz, the Toronto Star. Um, just going back to the subject of Ms. Gladue and other members of your caucus, you said our team will deal with this as a team because we respect one another and obviously you also have the Reform Act provisions. Will you ask your caucus to kick people out if they are offside with public health messaging on vaccines? Well, thanks, Stephanie. As you said, we respect people. It's why our team has already met twice. It's why we voted on the Reform Act to allow our caucus to have uh, uh, a lot of freedom with respect to decisions related to both the leader, my accountability, and to, to membership. Mr. Trudeau's team hasn't been meeting over the last two months, and we'll see if they allow that same degree of respect for their members with their vote on the Reform Act. Our team will talk about how we need to focus on the economy, on inflation, and as I said, reducing hesitancy and talking about how we can help families and advocate without creating more confusion. And those conversations, as you know, will be will be confidential. That's what a team does, but they're they're important because some of these conversations, like Ms. Gladue's comments yesterday, add to more uncertainty at a time that public officials should be reducing uncertainty. 
Just as my follow-up, um, in French you said that all of your MPs and senators will be vaccinated when the House of Commons returns. In English you said all of your MPs who participate in the House of Commons when it returns. So I'm just going to ask you to please specify, will all of your members of Parliament, all of your caucus, be present and in the House on November 22nd? Well, thanks for highlighting my French is not as perfect as my English. Uh, I, am, I am trying and my answers are not identical. Uh, as I've said consistently since this issue came up, when our MPs and Senators participate here on the Hill in debates, everyone will be vaccinated. Um, as I've said throughout this crisis, it's important for our party and it's important for elected officials to demonstrate leadership. That means respecting all laws. That means reducing uncertainty about uh, vaccines. It's why my wife and I filmed our vaccination process to try and answer questions uh, about this. Public officials should be encouraging a positive dialogue, uh, not dividing people, but certainly also not, uh, not causing more potential hesitancy when I, I think we should work together. That will be our approach. This concludes the press um, conference. My name is Althea. I'll, I'll take, I'll take a, a few more. Yeah, the there's only Perfect. a few of us in line. Thank go, you. Go ahead. Um, Althea Raj, the Toronto Star. Um, are you still opposed to vaccine mandates? As you know, I think vaccines are critical, and I encourage as many people to get vaccinated as possible. Um, in fact, what I suggested with respect to the, the federal government approach for federal employees, Mr. Trudeau has misled people about including transportation. Um, if you look and see what's happening in terms of some accommodations, uh, um, you're seeing that happening in the Federal Service Service exactly as how I predicted. But Mr. Trudeau, including today, will continue to mislead people and divide rather than try and say, let's get hesitancy down as much as possible, and we're going to be proposing some ideas on that, and let's, where we can, have some reasonable accommodations uh, and not confuse people or, or divide people. So I support as many people as possible getting vaccinated and answering any questions that people that have some degree of hesitancy may have. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up, kind of a different tack, you started the press conference talking about the co potential coalition agreement with the NDP. I'm wondering if in your conversation with the Prime Minister now several weeks ago, if you offered to work with him on any files and if so what those files would be and if you didn't can you explain to us why yes i did i in fact i said we should continue to work together on reconciliation um, it's very important to all canadians including myself it's also why i thanked him um, for for making the decision to go to to kamloops um, after his poor decision uh, to, to take a holiday on the first day of Truth and Reconciliation, I, I thanked him for, for, for doing that. It's important to show leadership. It's important to work together. What I will say about that conversation is Mr. Trudeau wants a virtual parliament. He wants a coalition to never be accountable to anyone. Um, this is why, despite this being a pivotal election in Canadian history, He's ignoring Parliament. We're not back for months. Um, he's hoping to just spend a little more and get the NDP to not ask the tough questions. Conservatives will ask the tough questions. We will also hold him to account for his continued ethical and, and lapses in, in, in judgment. And that's why we're going to show up on Parliament and we want to see real accountability, real committees, a real approach to accountability and transparency for the first time in two years. Dans ma conversation avec M. Trudeau, on a parlé sur la réconciliation et c'est important de, de travailler ensemble sur les appels d'action et sur le sujet de la réconciliation. C'est très important pour moi et pour notre caucus. Um, M. Trudeau, il préfère un parlement virtuel parce qu'il n'y a pas un, un niveau de, de scrutiny pour lui avec ça. Uh, et c'est pourquoi on a besoin d'un un parlement normal, les comités normales, et on doit uh, uh, arrêter les camouflages et, et les, les, la prorogation et les mesures uh, qu'il a utilisées pour, uh, 
uh, éviter les questions et l'accès la, uh, pour les Canadiens. Next question. Uh, Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail. Uh, I wonder if you get a fuller answer on your thoughts about Ms. Gladue's uh, project. Um, do you support this? If so, why? And what should she be doing and she and her team be doing, to, in your view, to make this worthwhile if they're going to be going out and sort of looking into these matters? Well, Ian, a fuller answer. <laughs> I've said there's a big difference between uh, MPs advocating for their constituents um, and looking for questions on, on people's economy or well-being and being impacted, whether it's from border measures, whether it's from the pandemic or what have you. MPs should do that, and Conservatives have a strong track record of being great advocates for people in their constituency. But there's a difference between um, creating more uncertainty about uh, vaccines or adding to hesitancy at a time as public officials, we should be reducing hesitancy, answering questions, and we should try and not divide Canadians on the subject of vaccines. We saw Mr. Trudeau do that by announcing a mandate just before he called an election, hoping to divide people on that subject. And so I think Conservatives, we have an obligation to show as elected officials leadership. And that's what our caucus will be talking about. So I hope that's a, a fuller answer for you. But there, I want our MPs to come here and advocate for their constituents. And, and there's a lot of uncertainty out there. There's a lot of division in our country right now. Um, Mr. Trudeau's cabinet appointments of Mr. Gibo and, and others at a time when the country's already fractured. Canada's a great country, but it's fragile. And it needs the Conservatives to be professional and to be here for the well-being of all Canadians. And uh, could you elaborate on what you found objectionable about Ms. Gladue's comments yesterday? Well, as I said, it is best for public officials to refer people to our public health authorities and our public health officers who've been doing long and hard work throughout this pandemic to answer questions uh, about the pandemic, about vaccines, about all the tools that we have. And so for, for MPs to to create confusion, that's a step backwards. And we, we saw that we saw that yesterday. So we will talk about that as a team because as I said, we want MPs that come here and advocate for their constituents. But as public officials, we have a responsibility uh, to to not have debates like we see on social media and other places, to to answer questions and have serious, respectful and professional debates for the well being of all Canadians. I'm told this is the last question. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, last month Canada uh, was one of the countries that reached an OECD-led agreement on a two-pillar global tax deal, including redistributing some taxing rights and a global minimum rate. During the recent election, your platform said you oppose a global minimum rate. Do you support Canada's participation in the OECD-led deal that was reached last month? Well, what I would like to see Canada is be a serious voice on the world stage again. Um, and there is not a respect for trade rules, uh, human rights norms, and emission reductions. So I don't want to see us start outsourcing all the measures we have to remain competitive as a country at a time that we see countries like India and China asking for decades longer periods of time to lower their emissions and meet international targets while we're seeing investment leave Canada and go there. Mr. Trudeau, who doesn't seem to care about our economic competitiveness and is willing to say things to look good on the international stage, we need to make sure that we have the tools to draw talent, to draw jobs and investment to Canada. And one of those measures is our tax rate, but also making sure that we see carbon border adjustment tariffs for countries that do not take emission reduction seriously. We propose that in our campaign as well. We want to see human rights and the sourcing of materials uh, away from countries that have terrible human rights records. We want to see that part of our economic dialogue. So this is why it's important for us to return as quickly as possible. We've got a supply chain shortage. We've got economic uncertainty in a lot of industries, including the hundreds of thousands of jobs in, in Western Canada and in energy. We are seeing more Buy American, and we don't see any country asking for Canada to participate in any discussions. Mr. Trudeau's failing Canadians, and we're going to raise that when we return. Respectfully, Mr. O'Toole, that had nothing to do with taxation. Uh, but I'll move on no, to the it other did, part because, of it. as I said, one of the measures is our corporate tax rate. So what we have to make sure is when we are working with other countries 
on emission reduction targets, on trade rules, on levels of taxation. We cannot uh, allow other countries to game all these discussions while the Boy Scout Canada follows all the rules and actually sees our investment and job climate being hollowed out. We see the bad energy players benefiting while good uh, players here in Canada uh, see their competitiveness erode. So they're, they're directly related. So uh, the finance minister has said that the government intends to move forward with legislation finalizing the enactment of Canada's own digital services tax by the end of the year. Given that you proposed a near identical DST in the campaign that just passed, will the Conservative Party vote in favor of that legislation when it's tabled? Well, we'll have to see the legislation, but the, the, the fundamental element of fairness between the American web giants and, and Canadian players and Canadian uh, content creators, both in French and English, we see as a big public policy goal, and we want to work there. Our concern has been also this government's uh, attempt to erode uh, liberty on, on social media, to change the way we regulate the Internet. We saw that with C10. We will oppose those measures, as have most of the former commissioners of the CRTC, I might add. But we do want to see a fairer approach to taxation. We want to see Canadian content uh, celebrated and set on an evil uh, level playing field. Merci Je vous prendre une autre question en français. Vous avez juste plus de Merci, c'est bien gentil. Euh, je veux juste revenir sur Mme Gladou, Mme Lewis. Je comprends que vous voulez laisser le soin au caucus de se prononcer, mais vous, personnellement, pensez-vous qu'elles peuvent rester membres de votre équipe? Vous êtes ici à nous dire qu'il faut défendre la vaccination, qu'il ne faut pas créer de confusion chez les gens qui ont une, une hésitation à se faire vacciner. Est-ce que vous ne manquez pas de leadership de ne pas nous dire, vous, Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Les voulez-vous encore dans votre équipe? Comme j'ai dit, j'aimerais voir un engagement fort sur les, les conversations positives sur l'efficacité et la sécurité des vaccins. Les vaccins sont très importants euh, et c'est notre utile très important dans notre lutte contre la COVID-19. C'est pourquoi, comme leaders, tous nos députés doivent avoir une approche de respect pour les pour les conversations sur la santé des Canadiens. Et j'étais déçu par la situation avec Mme Gladieu hier, et on va parler sur ça comme une équipe. Ben, vous ne répondez pas à la question, vous, ce que vous en pensez. Il y a des gens qui disent que vous manquez de leadership de permettre ce mini caucus-là dans votre parti. Vous n'avez pas l'air de vraiment montrer euh, la pointe dure. Donc, vous, qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Puis ma question, tu es sur le Parlement hybride. Êtes-vous euh, entièrement opposé à ce que le Parlement revienne siéger en personne? On est tous là en personne aujourd'hui. Euh, il y a des événements en personne qui reprennent. Et si oui, est-ce que c'est pas simplement pour permettre à vos quelques députés de pouvoir siéger sans être vaccinés de façon hybride? Premièrement, euh, je vais ré répéter euh, ma position sur notre caucus. Il y a une grande différence entre euh, le rôle comme un député pour vos citoyens et votre responsabilité pour la santé et les questions sur euh, la pandémie. Et il y a une différence euh, sur ça. Et je, je vais parler avec notre équipe sur ça. Mais pour, pour le Parlement euh, hybride, euh, j'aimerais voir plus de, de, de transparence. Et les Canadiens méritent euh, un gouvernement ouvert et les débats euh, normaux dans la Chambre. Et c'est pourquoi on va pousser pour un Parlement euh, normal, pas virtuellement, mais probablement c'était euh, une chose dans les discussions, les négociations entre M. Singh et M. Trudeau euh, pour leur coalition. Mais les Canadiens méritent mieux. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> I want to raise two, two uh, specific points, and then I'm looking forward to your questions. 
I want Canadians to know that from the beginning of this pandemic, we made one thing really clear. New Democrats are focused on getting help that people need. We're here to fight for you. And we're here to make sure that you get supports. People are worried about the climate crisis. We're going to fight as hard as we can to get more action so that we're protecting our environment. We're going to fight hard to make sure workers are not left behind. We're going to make sure we're fighting to have a recovery that actually focuses on people, not on shareholders and rich executives. We're going to make sure that people get the health care they need. We know that a lot of provinces right now and a lot of people are dealing with health care frontline worker shortages. So we're going to make sure we're going to fight to get more supports for you. We know that people are struggling to buy a house and affordability is top of mind. And we're going to fight hard to make sure people have a place to call home. They can afford a place to call home and that they get the supports they need to be able to make the ends, make ends meet. We are here for you and we're going to fight for you. Donc, euh, comme j'ai dit à euh, plusieurs reprises euh, pendant la pandémie, et je continue de dire ça, pour nous, les néo-démocrates, notre priorité, c'est d'aider les gens. Donc, on va toujours trouver des façons pour livrer les marchandises, pour rendre la vie plus facile, pour améliorer la vie des gens. Donc, on sait que les gens sont inquiétés par euh, la crise climatique et on va se battre fort pour défendre notre environnement et pour s'assurer qu'on ne laisse à côté, on ne laisse pas à côté les travailleurs et travailleuses. On va aussi aider les, les gens qui ont peur maintenant à cause de la crise en santé. Je sais qu'il y a une, une vraie, une vraie uh, crise à travers le pays pour uh, uh, accès aux services de, de soins de santé à cause d'un manque de travailleurs de première ligne en santé. Donc, on va travailler fort pour s'assurer que les gens ont accès aussi à ces besoins et ces services. On va aussi euh, s'assurer que les gens peuvent euh, aborder un logement. Je sais que c'est une crise maintenant. Plusieurs, euh, nombreuses personnes ne peuvent pas aborder un logement. Donc, on va travailler fort pour euh, rendre la vie plus, euh, plus abordable. Et euh, je veux vous, vous assurer, comme on a fait pendant la pandémie, on va travailler des façons pour s'assurer que le Parlement, que le gouvernement travaille pour vous, ça marche pour vous, ça fonctionne pour vous. Ça, c'est notre priorité. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm ready for any questions you have. Thank you. We will now proceed to questions. We ask journalists to ask one question and one follow-up. Merci. Nous allons maintenant prendre des questions. Nous demandons aux journalistes de prendre une question et une question de suivi. We'll start in the room today. Hi, good afternoon. Christy Kirkup with the Globe and Mail. Um, just wondering, your caucus chair said yesterday that there was no agreement uh, between your party and the government. So can you just be really precise? What were the nature of discussions that have taken place between your party and the government, and what were they focused on? Uh, as, as it often happens in the beginning of Parliament, we've had conversations with the Prime Minister. I've been sent here to have conversations with the Prime Minister, and I'm going to find every opportunity I, I can to speak with the Prime Minister about the priorities that people have shared with me throughout the campaign, but also throughout uh, my work in the constituency in Burnaby South and throughout the travels across Canada. People need help. They need to see action on the climate crisis. They want to make sure their lives are affordable so they can afford a home, they can afford to pay the bills. And I raise those concerns to the Prime Minister and I'll continue to do that. And just as a follow-up, would there be any concessions that your party would be willing to make on things like time allocation and closure on bills um, in exchange for NDP um, support and, um, you know, in exchange for action on NDP priorities? Like we did in the, in the minority government previously during the pandemic, we use our position to fight for help for people. And we pushed the liberal government to deliver more help to people. And that included uh, some of the things that you've outlined. Some of the things that we did were uh, to find ways to get more help to people financially. We fought to get a paid sick leave in place. We fought to increase the wage subsidy. So we're prepared to do similarly, whatever we can to get more help to people. And we're ready to work with the government to make that happen. I wanna be clear, we are still very critical of the government on, on a number of things. But when it comes to our goals, our goals are, can we get something that will make life better for people? And if we can, we'll work to achieve that. Next question in the room, Annie. Hi, it's Annie Bergeron Oliver yeah. with CTV National News. Um, do you have any intention on entering into a formal agreement of any kind with the Liberals to prop them up for the foreseeable future? There is no agreement of that nature um, before us. Uh, we are prepared to find ways to make the government work or the parliament work for people. And we're open to discussions about how we can make parliament work to deliver what people need. But there is no such agreement. 
Oui, oui, oui. Euh, donc, euh, euh, on est prêt de travail pour euh, s'assurer que le gouvernement, le Parlement fonctionne pour les gens, mais on n'a pas, on n'a pas à ce moment euh, aucune euh, accord de travail ensemble. Mais euh, on est ouvert de trouver des façons de forcer ce gouvernement de livrer les marchandises pour les gens. Earlier today, the conservative leader said the liberals are promising billions of dollars in new spending to, quote, buy your silence and avoid accountability and scrutiny. What do you think of O'Toole's characterization of both you and your party? Uh, it's uh, patently false. What we have done is to fight to get help for people. And we can look back in the, par in the last parliament and look exactly what we did. We absolutely fought to deliver more help for Canadians, but we were highly critical of the government on fighting Indigenous kids in court. We remain highly critical of the government. We think it's wrong that Justin Trudeau is fighting Indigenous kids in court. I'll continue to fight for those kids to make sure that they are not being prosecuted in court or that that court case doesn't continue. And instead of having a court case that continues, that there is a settlement to make sure that Indigenous kids get equal funding and that they're not faced with injustice and discrimination. So we'll continue to be critical on those things. Um, but I want to make it clear, what has Mr. O'Toole done since the last election? Since getting elected, the official opposition of Canada, the Canadian Conservatives, have been fighting to get special treatment for their MPs, special treatment to sit in Parliament unvaccinated, putting other people's lives at risk or other people's health at risk. That's been their priority. That's the only thing I've heard from them since the last election. That is a pretty abysmal failure of leadership. If the only thing that you're known for is fighting to get special treatment for your MPs, you're missing the plot. Right now, we need to fight for people. People told us they're worried about getting a home. We need to be fighting to make sure they can afford a home. People told us they're worried about the climate crisis. We need to be working on making sure people get the supports they need so that we can fight this climate crisis. That's what we're focused on. We're focused on people. Mr. O'Toole seems clearly focused on himself and getting special treatment for his MPs. That's the wrong thing to do. Prochaine question dans la salle. Je comprends, M. Singh, qu'il n'y a pas d'entente formelle en ce moment avec le Parti libéral, mais est-ce que vous cherchez à en obtenir une au moment où on se parle? Est-ce que vous pensez que ce serait une bonne idée s'il y en avait une entre le NPD et les libéraux? Pour moi, ce n'est pas une question de si c'est une bonne idée d'avoir une entente. Pour moi, ce qui, ce qui est important, c'est d'avoir un engagement de faire des choses importantes pour aider les gens. Donc, c'est une, une différence importante parce que, pour moi, euh, ce n'est pas, on n'a pas un besoin d'avoir une entente. Moi, j'ai aucune raison d'avoir une entente. Mais j'ai beaucoup de motivation d'avoir des engagements pour livrer la marchandise pour les gens. Ça veut dire des engagements forts pour, euh, pour faire face à la crise du logement. Parce que je sais que les gens ont de la misère à trouver des maisons abordables. Donc ça, c'est quelque chose que je veux voir des engagements. Je veux voir des actions concrètes pour euh, faire face à la crise climatique. Donc je veux voir des engagements pour prendre des mesures concrètes pour, euh, pour répondre aux besoins des gens. Et, et je veux voir ça. Et je suis ouvert à trouver des façons de faire ça. Mais tu sais, par exemple, sur le logement, sur la question environnementale, ça, ça fait partie du programme des libéraux. Donc, quels seraient les, les critères pour vous là, absolument essentiels pour qu'il y ait une entente formelle, juste pour qu'on comprenne? Là? Pour moi, encore, euh, il n'y a une entente formelle et je suis ouvert euh, aux, aux questions, euh, à la question de comment on peut forcer ce gouvernement de travail pour les gens. Donc, je suis prêt pour utiliser ma position pour, pour forcer ce gouvernement de, de faire des choses concrètes. Mais euh, ce qu'on a vu depuis les, les, six, années de, les six années passées, c'est un gouvernement qui, qui donne des belles paroles. Ils ont parlé souvent de la crise du, du, du logement. Mais à ce moment, si on pose la question aux gens, est-ce que c'est plus facile aujourd'hui, après six ans du gouvernement libéral, d'acheter une maison, de trouver un logement abordable? Ils vont dire non, pas du tout. C'est plus difficile au lieu d'être plus facile. Et si on parle de, des actions sur la crise climatique, c'est clair que le bilan de M. Trudeau était, était un échec. Donc, on veut voir des, des, des engagements concrets. Et pour avoir ces engagements concrets, on est prêt de trouver des façons de travailler ensemble. We'll take one more question in the room before checking the phone line. Global National. So, it sounds like you don't have a formal deal. You're not looking for a formal deal. But there are serious discussions happening where you can leverage some sort of influence over this prime minister and this government. So what are your top priorities, either one or two, 
that you have communicated to this prime minister to say to him, you will have the NDP support if you get this and that done within whatever time that you've set for him? Or have you given him that type of uh, indication? Uh, there are things that we, we agree on. And there's things that, that I've said really clearly that we could pass right away. We've long been calling for paid sick leave. We believe that there should not be a question in this country whether or not people have access to paid sick leave. And we can start by showing leadership at the federal level by legislating paid sick leave. I've called for expanding paid sick leave 22 times over the past uh, over 18 months. Mr. Trudeau said no, essentially every time. And now I, during the camp or the last campaign, he mentioned that, okay, they're in support of it. So I said, if you're, if you're actually in support of paid sick leave, you'll have our support to pass that right away. We believe that needs to happen. So there's things like that where there's agreement and we could pass the, that type of legislation immediately. Paid sick leave is an example of something concrete. In terms of a broader, uh, broader goals, there's, this is where we're concerned. We, we've heard the Liberals talk about their, their interest in tackling the housing crisis, but we haven't seen real, real concrete action. But there's nothing slowing us down. If they wanted to bring forward something that would actually make it easier for people to afford a home or something that would tackle the, the out-of-control rise in price in housing, something that would tackle house flipping or tackle the, the pressures from foreign ownership, uh, we would be prepared to work on those things right away. So when it comes to our top priorities, I would say making life more affordable in general, affordability, and in that, that probably housing is the biggest concern, but making life more affordable. And secondly, the climate crisis. Um, and those are right, right beside each other. They're the most important things that people have been talking about. And those are our, my two priorities. I want to see real action on making life more affordable. That's, that's housing in particular. And I want to see real action on fighting the climate crisis because this is the, the crisis of our times. say to the Prime Minister, we will not have our support on this and we will bring you down as a government if you cross this red line and added to that, how much time or how long of a leash does this government have? Well, I said they, they shouldn't expect our support and take it for granted on anything. They, they just shouldn't expect that we're going to support anything unless it's actually going to help people. So uh, if they want to bring in uh, tax breaks that help out the super rich, they can't count on us for support. They could probably go to the Conservatives. If they want to do something that hurts workers, like they've done in the past, they're not going to be able to count on us for support. They can probably, again, work with the Conservatives as they've done in the past. But our support should not be taken for granted. We want to work together if it helps people. We will not work together if it hurts people. We'll now take questions on the phone. Operator? Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. And the first question, la première question, est de Hélène Buzetti, les coop de l'information. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Bonjour. Euh, alors, je vais que tout le monde a posé un peu la question sur euh, l'entente formelle. Vous dites, bon, il n'y a pas d'entente, vous n'en avez pas nécessairement besoin d'une, mais juste pour clarifier, est-ce qu'il a été à un moment donné question d'une entente formelle? Est-ce qu'on on, on est arrivé là à discuter une entente formelle de coalition, ou appelez ça comme vous voulez, pour euh, maintenir le gouvernement deux ou trois ans? Euh, il n'y a pas de tout la question de coalition, et ça, c'est pas de tout le cas. Donc, il n'y a aucune... Euh, désir de mon côté d'avoir une coalition. Ça, c'est un faire non. Euh, L'idée de travailler ensemble, on a dit, comme on a dit dans les autres parlements, euh, on est prêt de travailler ensemble si ça aide les gens. Si le gouvernement veut faire quelque chose qui va faire mal aux gens, qui va nuire les gens, donc il ne peut pas compter sur nous pour euh, appuyer une telle euh, mesure. Donc, euh, notre priorité, c'est de trouver des façons de livrer les marchandises pour les gens, de trouver des façons d'aider les gens, d'amener leur vie. Et on, on, est, on est prêt de faire ça. Donc, euh, ça, c'est effectivement ce qu'on a dit. J'ai parlé et j'ai expliqué. Je suis ici euh, parce que les gens ont décidé d'avoir un gouvernement minoritaire. Les gens veulent qu'on qu fasse le travail nécessaire pour les aider. Et je suis prêt de faire ça. Euh, une des choses euh, ils que ont le gouvernement... posé la, a... la réponse en, en anglais et puis euh, votre suivi. Mais donnez-moi un, un, un moment, s'il vous plaît. Uh, there is no discussion at all of a coalition, and that is a firm no for me. There is no, there's not going to be any coalition at all. Uh, but I am prepared to find ways to, to work together. And I've made that clear uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. I want to work to deliver more help to people. I want to make sure this parliament works for people. And I want to respect the decision that Canadians have made in this election. They sent us here to work for them. They expect us to work for them. 
And that means, in my mind, to make sure Parliament actually works to deliver what people need. And so when it comes to helping people, I'm ready to work together. If it comes to hurting people or making a decision that's going to make life difficult for people, the Liberals can't count on my support. And we've laid out some of the key priorities. You know, we want to see action on fighting the climate crisis and we want to see action on, on making life more affordable. Et puis, votre suivi oui. Alors, euh, une des, des priorités du gouvernement, c'est de faire adopter un, euh, le, prolong, ben, le prolongement des mesures d'aide, mais pour certaines catégories de travailleurs. Je crois comprendre que vous n'êtes peut-être pas très chaud à cette idée. Est-ce que ça a été un obstacle dans vos discussions? Et si vous pouviez aussi me dire, euh, qu'en est-il du Parlement virtuel? Est-ce qu'on va revenir avec une portion virtuelle? Merci. J'ai manqué une partie de votre première question. Donc, si vous pouvez... Oh, excusez-moi. Non, non, pas du tout. Alors, euh, sur le prolongement euh, des mesures oh, d'aide oui. pour les travailleurs, etc., euh, je ne suis pas certaine que vous êtes d'accord. Donc, est-ce que ça faisait partie des discussions et est-ce que ça a permis, euh, ça a fait achoper peut-être euh, les discussions? Merci. Merci. Euh, oui, j'ai dit euh, que je ne suis pas d'accord avec euh, la décision de couper l'aide aux gens. Euh, je pense que ce n'est pas surprenant. J'ai dit que on doit continuer l'aide aux gens. Euh, au lieu de ça, j'ai dit que je suis ouvert à une alternative. Ça, ça veut dire si on peut faire les changements nécessaires pour la science emploi pour qu'elle puisse couvrir plus de gens. On sait que les travailleurs autonomes, par exemple, ne sont pas euh, couvrir par, couvrir, euh, couverts par euh, la science emploi. Donc, ça, c'est un exemple de quelque chose qu'on doit régler. Donc, je suis ouvert aux alternatives euh, des, des mesures d'aide de, aux gens si on a un changement dans la science emploi ou si on aussi euh, règle des autres problèmes comme euh, maintenant pour euh, nos aînés vulnérables à ce moment il y a une, une coupure de l'aide qu'ils reçoivent donc euh, c'est une autre chose que j'ai dit qu'on doit régler ça donc ce sont les mesures si on parle de l'aide financière aux gens et deuxièmement euh, pour le parlement hybride je suis pour un parlement hybride et je vais appuyer une telle mesure. Je pense que c'est important euh, pendant cette pandémie, mais aussi en général pour euh, les députés avec des, euh, des petits-enfants, des, des euh, responsabilités familiales. Pour plusieurs raisons, je suis pour une continuation d'un parlement hybride. On prendra une autre question de téléphone avant de retourner à la salle Once again, please press star one if you have questions. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. Et la question suivante, the next question is from Mary Brooke, Island Social Trends. Please go ahead. Hi, Mr. Singh. Hi there. Um, so along the, line, hi, along the lines of making life more affordable, um, after November 22nd, how quickly will the NDP bring forward legislation to declare that CERB was an emergency one-time benefit for low-income seniors? And therefore, the GIS that's been clawed back could be established on 2019 income. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we, that's, that's one of our, our immediate uh, demands. We think that can be addressed right away. Uh, vulnerable seniors are right now being targeted with clawbacks. It's incredibly difficult for them. And we want to see that fixed. Uh, there's also lots of vulnerable folks that required CERB that are unable to, to pay back their amount, and we want to look at amnesty for those folks that are vulnerable. Uh, so these type of measures are things that we're very open to, uh, and, and we're looking at ways to make that happen. Okay, and then um, the um, Minister's Office for Seniors has told Island Social Trends that, of course, seniors can individually go back to through Service Canada, and one by one, on a case-by-case -case basis, Uh, try to sort out what their income might be this year and sort of negotiate and figure out, you know, if they could get their GIS back. Um, how do you see that as a solution right now? And isn't that sort of a, a lot of use of government time to kind of, um, and, and a lot of seniors may not be able to cope with that. Yeah, and just on, on this issue of GIS, we know that the people that are on GIS are amongst the most vulnerable to require additional difficult steps so that they can continue to get support is the wrong thing to do. And frankly, like you suggested, a bad use of our, of our public sector resources, uh, of our public service. We believe that there should no longer be clawbacks. Those that were on GIS should be able to continue on GIS and receive the full amount that they received before. Uh, 
Uh, that That's what should happen moving forward. We want to end the clawbacks and we want to see those vulnerable seniors continue to receive the support they need. In fact, we campaign on increasing support to seniors to lift every senior out of poverty. So we certainly don't want to see any cuts to the help they receive when we know people are barely getting by on what they receive. And these are these are seniors that are that are amongst the most vulnerable. And we as a society have to take care of them to make sure that they're supported and they're able to live a life of dignity. Uh, that's a real serious imp- uh, priority for us. And we'll head back to the room for questions. Uh, Alex Palingal, Toronto Star. Hey there. Um, just going back to this uh, uh, discussion about the formal agreement or, or uh, y- you know, you're saying there's no, <laughs> whatever we're talking about, no coalition, firm no, um, and there's been no, there's, there's nothing on the table in terms of a formal agreement to support the government. But is that something that you're seeking or that you plan to seek. So a, f- a formal agreement to get some of your priorities enacted in exchange for supporting the government for a certain amount of time. Is that something that you want and that you are seeking? It's not something I'm seeking, uh, and it's not something I inherently want. Uh, what I want is to make sure people get help. And if, it's, if there is an agreement to get people the help they need, I'm open to hearing the government out on that. Uh, but there is no agreement. There has been no specific offer made. Uh, But what I did do is lay out the things that I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the fact that people can't find a home right now. They're worried about housing. And I want to see some action on that. People are worried about the cost of living in general. So we want to see supports for people to deal with the cost of living. We know that people are worried about the climate crisis. And we want to see action on that. And we laid out some things that we want to see happen. We want to see this government stop fighting kids in court. We want to see this government start taking real action to support the healthcare worker shortage in, in provinces across this country. So we want to see some real specific things to help people through this difficult time. And to achieve those things, we're willing to hear the government out on ways we can make those things happen. But our goal is to make sure life is better for people and that we're fighting to get the, the help that people need. And we are open to making that happen. Uh, that does not mean that we are we're in any way are going to stop criticizing the mistakes that this government makes or when they're, when they're going down the wrong path, like fighting kids in court. We'll continue to raise those concerns. We'll continue to be critical of those decisions. But we want to find ways to make this problem work for people, and we're open to, to discussions around that. And just on your priorities that you're pushing, um, during the election you talked a lot about taxing the rich and, the, and having a wealth tax. I haven't heard you mention that today. Is that Why is that? Is that not something you believe can be accomplished with the Liberals, or... Or is that uh, there's more prior- other priorities are more important at this point? Or why, why aren't you talking about the wealth tax and taxing the rich? I thought I thought everyone knew my position on that really clearly. I've said that a lot during the campaign, but absolutely it remains my position, a firm position that the pressure of this pandemic, the cost of this pandemic, the cost of the recovery should not fall on the shoulders of people. It should not fall on the shoulders of workers. It should not fall on the shoulders of small businesses. It should be the super wealthy that pay their fair share. And that, that remains my position. Next question in the room. Yeah, hi, Ryan Templeton, National Post. Uh, really appreciate your clarity on the coalition discussions. Just wondering, uh, would you entertain a, a confidence and supply agreement like the BC NDP did with the Greens in 2017? So the general response, I want to make Parliament work for people, and so we have no such agreement on the table. There is no such discussion right now. We are open to finding ways to make sure this government does the things that people needed uh, needed to do. And to that to that goal, I'm open to hearing thoughts on that. I'm open here to hearing the government on that. But there is nothing before us. There is no such agreement before us. But I want to be really clear on my goal. My goal is there are a whole series of things that people have sent us here to do. And there are things that are people are really worried about. And I want to make this government deliver on those things. So I'm willing to hear them out on, on, what, they, on what they're willing to do. And I'm here to push them to do more. And I know during the campaign, a sort of theme of your campaign was that despite what he says uh, and the, the promises that he makes, that you can't really trust, trust Justin Trudeau. Does that make it difficult for you to entertain any kind of agreement on legislative priorities at any level? Yes. Hi, Mr. Singh. Uh, Tom Perry with CBC. Hey so I'm just trying to get in my mind, do you see things in this session being pretty much the way they worked last time around, where the liberals are going to be looking for support from you on some things, from the bloc on other things? Or do you see it being like more of a, I'm going to say formal, maybe like a, a more of an informal agreement with your party that to, to, to get measures through? So 
As it stands right now, it's going to be the same as before. If they want to come to us for support on a specific bill, they know where we stand on things. For example, if they wanted support on paid sick leave, it's not hard to guess. We would say yes for a paid sick leave. If it's 10 legislated days of paid sick leave at the federal level, we would support something that, like that right away. So there's things like that where the government knows where we stand. And if they wanted to make it happen right now, if they wanted support on a legislation like that, we would be there. On childcare, they know where we stand. We support childcare. If there was a desire to make childcare permanent, which is what we want to see it happen, instead of agreements that get renewed every so often, so they're a formal part of our of our Canadian landscape that people know that there will be affordable childcare. To make that permanent, we would be willing to support something like that. Measures to make housing more affordable, to stop the commodification of housing. If they want to support on those type of measures, we're right here and ready to do that. On healthcare, they know that we believe in, in investing in healthcare. If they had any desire to invest in healthcare, they know they can count on us for support to make sure frontline healthcare workers get the funding they need so that our the people can get the care they need if they get sick. So on things like that, they can count on our support. They know where we stand. Uh, but if they want to cut help to people, if they want to um, increase the, the giveaways to the super rich, if they want to hurt workers, uh, they'll do what they've done in the past, which is to go to the conservatives or the bloc. And so it's clear where they can go and we are prepared to work together to deliver help for people. But uh, there, is no, there is no agreement. There is no formal or informal agreement. Every vote will be taken uh, vote by vote, and we are prepared to support where it's going to be in the benefit of people. And you said today that it's a, on a coalition, it's a firm no. And I'm just wondering, we keep hearing from Mr. O'Toole warning of a radical agenda under a liberal NDP coalition. What do you think he's doing with those kind of arguments? He's making stuff up, I think. Uh, but more importantly, he's trying to distract from the fact that uh, he has done nothing since getting elected to help people. And all he's been doing is focusing on himself and his party. And it's pretty embarrassing, if I can be really f frank with you all, that you've got the leader of the official opposition that is focused in this pretty difficult time when people are uncertain about the future. They want to know what's going on. We've got Alberta and Saskatchewan going through a healthcare crisis. We just heard from our member of parliament, Heather McPherson and, and Blake Desjardins about the lack of access to ambulance care right now in Alberta. Like things are bad. Instead of talking about what matters to people, like getting more healthcare funding, like getting more supports for frontline healthcare workers so that the people in these provinces that are hard hit will actually get support. He's trying to get special treatment for his, for his MPs. He's trying to get unvaccinated people into the House of Commons, putting workers here at risk, putting the media at risk, putting uh, healthcare or frontline workers here in the parliament at risk, people that have to uh, work with uh, the public that, that receive people as they come in, the security and other staff members here. They're putting workers at risk. That's their priority. Uh, trying to get special treatment. That's their priority. And focusing on themselves. Uh, when we have been consistently saying, let's get help to people, Let's stop the, the court case against Indigenous kids. Let's deliver action on the climate crisis. Let's make life more affordable. Let's tackle the housing crisis. Let's tackle the health care crisis. We're focused on people. And uh, Mr. O'Toole seems to be focused on himself and his party. Et and that's to the detriment of people. Prochaine question dans la salle, Marie. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Allô, oui, de ce côté-ci. <rire> euh, vous... J'ai entendu votre voix, j'ai dit. Que ouais, monsieur... je suis là. Euh, vous avez dit plusieurs fois que there's no agreement on the table. Je veux juste clarifier, est-ce qu'il y a eu une entente de, de proposer euh, à un moment ou à un autre entre maintenant et, et, et depuis l'élection? Entre maintenant et depuis l'élection? Depuis l'élection jusqu'à maintenant. Oh, ouais. Est-ce qu'il y a eu une entente de proposer depuis l'élection? OK. Et euh, les discussions, est-ce qu'elles sont toujours en cours, euh, tu actives, ou est-ce que c'est juste que la ligne est ouverte puis vous allez répondre au téléphone si on vous appelle? Est-ce qu'il y a des conversations en ce moment qui ont cours? Non, la, 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 la porte est ouverte, comme vous avez donné la, la, la seconde exemple. La porte est ouverte pour faire fonctionner ce gouvernement pour délivrer les marchandises pour les gens. C'est toujours ouvert et j'ai eu des discussions euh, au début du Parlement, au début de, de cette session, comme on, on a fait dans la prochaine session aussi. Et j'ai parlé de mes priorités et je vais continuer de dire ça. Et si je peux avoir une autre occasion de parler avec, avec le Premier ministre, je vais le prendre. 
qu'on me coupe. Les discussions entre votre équipe et celle du premier ministre. Pas, pas juste vous et M. Trudeau, là, mais des discussions at large entre néo-démocrates et libéraux. Oh, Est-ce qu'elles sont en cours? Les discussions entre tous les chefs, euh, toutes les équipes, c'est euh, quelque chose qui se passe tout le temps. Euh, entre les autres partis, notre house leader parle avec les autres partis tout le temps. Donc ça, ça continue. Inadible, la presse canadienne, oui. je vais continuer dans le même, le oui. même ordre d'idée. On va essayer de rendre ça vraiment tout à fait clair. Depuis l'élection et jusqu'à aujourd'hui, les seules discussions pour, entre libéraux et néo-démocrates, pas sur les leaders, pas sur la façon dont les choses fonctionnent, mais sur une possibilité de faire durer le gouvernement, les seules discussions qu'il y a eu, c'est cette rencontre, une, que vous, vous avez eue avec M. Trudeau. C'est ça euh, J'ai eu des discussions avec le premier ministre. C'est la seule chose qui s'est passée. Et notre leader en chambre a eu des discussions. Et je m'excuse, j'ai aussi eu des discussions avec les autres leaders, les autres chefs aussi. Et euh, il y avait des discussions avec notre équipe et les autres parties. Ça, ça, ça continue. Donc, si les choses fonctionnent exactement comme elles fonctionnaient au dernier Parlement, au cas par cas, comment est-ce que vous pouvez être sûr que ça va durer plus longtemps que les 18 mois qu'a duré le dernier Parlement? Euh, on ne sait pas. Parce que dans la dernière élection, c'était les libéraux qui ont choisi de faire déclencher une élection. Donc, euh, de mon part, je suis ici pour euh, forcer ce gouvernement d'aider les gens. Et comme j'ai dit dans le passé, pendant la pandémie, j'ai dit clairement que c'est une mauvaise décision de faire déclencher une élection pendant la pandémie. Je continue d'avoir cette même opinion. Et c'est les libéraux qui ont décidé de faire déclencher une élection. Tout à fait attaché toutes les cordes, parce que la rumeur est courte depuis pas mal de jours maintenant. Donc, vous avez seulement discuté avec M. Trudeau à propos de ça. Est-ce que des gens dans votre cabinet, dans celui de M. Trudeau, ont eu des discussions sur la façon de faire durer le gouvernement depuis la dernière élection ou non? Tout ça, ça a été des vues de l'esprit inventées par des journalistes. <rire> on, a, on a eu des discussions avec euh, les autres partis depuis l'élection euh, à plusieurs reprises. Donc, ces discussions avec tous les partis, j'ai parlé avec les autres chefs aussi. Donc, ces discussions, ça continue, ça existe. On, parle, on sait de quoi on parle. On parle libéraux, ah. néo-démocrates, essayent de s'entendre pour, pour que le gouvernement ne tombe non. pas. Là-dessus, il y a eu vous et M. Trudeau, vous avez discuté. Oui. À part ça, rien d'autre. Oui, rien d'autre. Parfait. Merci. J'ai juste une petite question par rapport à Air Canada. Ça sera vraiment pas long. Oui, oui, oui. Euh, le PDG d'Air Canada a dit aujourd'hui, en fait, s'est engagé à prendre des cours de français. Est-ce que c'est suffisant pour vous? L'idée de, de prendre les cours, euh, de s'engager, d'apprendre la langue, c'est une, une bonne chose de faire en général. Mais euh, pour un pour une service comme euh, une service aviation comme ça, euh, les gens sont fâchés que, que euh, des propos que le PDG a dit que oh, je n'ai pas besoin de, de parler français au Québec, je peux me débrûler sans, sans avoir cette, euh, cette capacité. Donc, je pense que les gens sont fâchés euh, avec ces propos. Euh, ces propos n'étaient pas sensibles aux, aux sensibilités au Québec. Donc, je pense que ça, c'est vraiment la pro le problème. Mais l'idée de, de prendre les cours, c'est une bonne chose à faire. We'll check once again the telephone for any questions. Operator. The next question, la question suivante, est d'Hélène Buzetti, les coops de l'information. La parole est à vous. Oui, Monsieur Singh, sur un tout autre sujet, euh, oui. parce que vous avez parlé vaguement de la, de la vaccination des députés. Vous, euh, est-ce que vous êtes en faveur d'une obligation vaccinale pour tous les travailleurs, dans le fond? Euh, pour euh, tous les travailleurs. Je suis pour... Euh, euh, une, une vaccination mandatoire pour les travailleurs de santé et de, de première ligne, les gens qui ont accès, contact avec les gens, en travaillant toujours avec euh, les syndicats et avec les travailleurs et les travailleuses. Mais, mais je, suis, je suis pour la vaccination, oui. Mais, mais, mais ma question, c'est est-ce que vous pensez que tous les milieux de travail devraient rendre la vaccination obligatoire? Euh, comme j'ai dit, je, il y a deux éléments, donc j'ai parlé de, en santé, je pense que c'est clair, c'est important, c'est essentiel. 
Et pour les travailleurs qui ont des contacts avec euh, la publique, je pense que c'est aussi clair que c'est important. Et euh, je suis d'accord avec euh, l'obligation euh, dans le milieu de travail fédéral. Euh, C'était proposé, je suis, je suis d'accord avec ça. And one more question in the room. One more yes. question. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of gauging the prime minister's degree of openness to working with you, would you say on a spectrum he's more willing to work with you this time around, less willing, kind of in the middle? Like, just give us some type of flavor. The last time I saw you here in person, you were saying, we want to work with you. Reach out. We haven't had the olive branch. Reach out, prime minister. There's been a discussion. So can you just kind of give us some sense of where he's at and the degree of openness that you sense in terms of hearing you out on policy. You're looking for the juice. And I'm not giving you the juice today, I don't think. So uh, we, are, we are open and there is not a closure on their part. So that is what I can give you. So but... Uh, I couldn't say because I, I don't. I, I'm not saying this in a in a in a flipping way. Like I am happy to keep on fighting for people the way we fought for people in the last parliament. I'm content to do that. If the government wants to do more, if they're interested in doing more, I'm willing to hear them. So it's kind of in their court if that if that's what they want to do. So I'm open is is all I'm saying, and I am also happy to keep on fighting for people the way we did in the past. So that's I can't really give you much juice. <laughs> This is all the time we have for today. Well, we've heard both sides and we we as the people we have the power to well, one we exercise one of those powers. We went out and we voted and we elected um a government that we believe will support us. And we also have the, have the power of um, reasonable protests as long as we keep things pr uh, peaceful. And I always suggest, and it is my thought that writing a letter, corresponding email, that sort of thing, with what it is that we believe, even um, there have been... Um, petitions that have gone around. One a petition about the, uh, the RCMP not wanting to have to to work with imposing uh, vaccine mandates and uh, vaccine ID cards and things like that. There have been other um, such petitions uh, asking asking for different things that we know our community actually needs or saying hey that's not in in line with what our community needs and we need to actually change that or take it away we emails and petitions are probably the loudest speaking things that can actually happen even if, even though they're not seemingly as public They actually get the attention of the elected officials and eventually they, when they see enough signatures and see enough signatures either go the way they want them to go so that if I do, if I support this petition, hey, I can get voted in again. Or if I oppose it, ooh, I'm going to lose a bunch of votes and I may not get reelected. That's important to the politician. Our Elected officials are put there by our votes, and we need to actually levy those votes so that we get what we need for our community. So, um, we need to voice our opinions so that our elected officials know what, what it is that we want or don't want. So, thank you for listening today. You've been listening to policy and rights here on depictions media radio and i have been your host michael clocks
Thank you for listening today, and thank you for supporting us with our sponsors. Please go to depictions.media for more information, and click on our contact link and let us know how we can help, how we can help bring your story and help bring us to a better world. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.